When reading other PC building guides, I've found that some of the most overlooked components on the computer are the mouse, keyboard, and monitor. However, don't fear, because we're going to get into them in this video. Especially if you're gaming, you'll want to look into buying a mouse, gaming or otherwise, at the very least. You could probably get by with a standard office kind of keyboard and monitor, but gaming mice have features and ergonomics that can help you perform better while gaming. Let's start with monitors, and maybe you've already got one if you're a console gamer or you just have one lying around your home office. If so, that's perfect and you'll probably be fine with that until you decide you want to up the ante a little bit in the visuals department. The biggest improvement will probably come in the refresh rate. What's a refresh rate? Well, it looks fluid to us, but your monitor is actually showing a new image dozens of times per second. Obviously, it has to do that when you're watching a movie or playing a game. However, even when you're using a word processor or something basically still, your screen is constantly displaying a new image of that word processor dozens of times per second. Most office monitors refresh 60 times per second, or 60 hertz. Remember from our RAM and CPU videos, that Hertz refers to the completion of a cycle, so the monitor completes 60 cycles per second. However, gaming monitors will usually exceed that number to give you more fluid display and deliver more information to your eye than the standard 60 Hertz. The range of refresh rates goes from 60 to 75 up to 144 or even 244 times per second. It is debated whether or not the human eye can even perceive past 60 or 75 Hertz, but scientists do seem to agree that the brain can still interpret information sent to it past the normal range. I definitely noticed a huge difference in image fluidity when upgrading to a 60 Hertz screen to the 144 Hertz screen behind me. I felt much more immersed in my games and I thought the image looked a lot more slick. Whether or not it actually makes me any better or provides me with any more information, who really knows? Past 75 Hertz, monitors will start to get pretty expensive, especially if you're looking at larger displays. The monitor I use now is a 1440p monitor at 144 Hz, and it goes for around $400, so it's not cheap. If you're budget-minded, I would look at sticking to 1080p and pursuing a higher frame rate, and that would probably get you the most bang for your buck. Monitors can also have different types of display panels that give their image different characteristics. There's a helpful chart here made by monitor manufacturer BenQ that gives a brief overview of what you need to know about each panel type. TN is usually the cheapest and as such gives the poorest color reproduction and slightly worse viewing angles, like if you turn the screen it will start to look off. Um, I never really understood the obsession with viewing angles. If I'm going to look at a monitor, I'm going to position it so that it's pointed at my face and that I'm not looking at it from the side. Maybe for a TV this would be a bigger issue, but I don't think it's a huge issue for monitors, if you can control how it's set up on your desk. Despite some color issues, TN panels have very short response times, which makes them great for gaming. This is the basically the difference between when your monitor receives a signal and when it displays it. These response times are usually around one to four milliseconds and the difference there will not be noticeable. But if you're really looking to lose the extra latency, TN is a good option. IPS is another kind of panel that's good for prioritizing color reproduction for photo editing or color correction and video production. Another type of panel, VA, is somewhere in the middle in terms of color reproduction and does tend to have a higher contrast ratio, which will give you higher peaks and lows between light and dark pixels. For a monitor, I would budget out at least three to four hundred dollars to get a monitor with features you can use in the future if you want to upgrade your PC. Keyboards are a pretty subjective peripheral. It depends on what you like. Uh, you can easily spend hundreds of dollars on a mechanical keyboard if that's your thing, but I know nothing about that. It's just not for me. I also find it a little impractical for gaming mechanical keyboards. I don't want to have to press hard or get a clicky sound that is audible from another room when I'm using W, A, S, and D to run around in my game. It's just not for me. Another choice you can make is getting a wireless keyboard, which I don't feel is necessary. Wired tends to be cheaper, and I've had this same $40 keyboard for more than five years now, and it's still going strong. A mouse is another pretty subjective peripheral. I tend to prefer a bigger mouse because my hands will start to cramp if it's too small. I also find it easier to aim and shoot with a bigger mouse because I feel like my arms have more leverage. I don't mind a heavier mouse. Uh, some people are obsessed with having an extremely light mouse for eSports and uh, streamers especially, but 
I don't mind a little bit of weight. I also used a wired mouse for a long time and I will say that upgrading to wireless was a really big improvement. The charging does get annoying sometimes, but the form factor is nearly the same and I never liked uh, getting the wire caught on a desk like I did with a wired mouse, something I definitely won't miss. A couple of features you might want to look for are a couple of customizable buttons near the thumb for in-game abilities and maybe a DPI switcher near your scroll wheel for adjusting your mouse's, your mouse's sensitivity on the fly. There are plenty of good mice for $50 or, on, or under. I like the Razer Death Adder because their size fits my hand well. I've tried Logitech G series and actually had to return them because I found them to be uncomfortable for my hand. You can take this with a grain of salt, however, because there will be different preferences for almost every person that uses a mouse. So this is the last video in the series explaining the various components that make up a PC. If you've watched all the way to the end of this playlist, I really appreciate your viewership. If you have any questions about any other PC parts, check out the rest of the videos in this playlist. I'll leave a link in the description. If you'd like to take a look at the parts that I use for my computer, you can also check out the link in the description or look at my guide on how to build a PC from start to finish, which should be coming out soon. Thanks so much for watching to the end of this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And if you're new here, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. I'll see you in the next video.